and that's money that could have been spent on uh, uh, boosting education infrastructure uh, our roads and also investing in new projects that could uh, provide uh, new employment opportunities for our young people thank you so much for making us your number one inspiration station on this lovely tuesday it is uh, february 28th the todd Berry ace uh, kind of day so if you know you know in studio this morning i'm joined by dr alfredo hengari now his excellency dr president uh, or president hagi genkop on the occasion of the official opening of cabinet this month has revealed the theme for this year which is the year of revival addressing the first cabinet meeting the president reiterated that a clean page lies ahead on which the future can be shaped having learned from the past joining us again on the socials this morning is press secretary at the office of the president dr alfredo hengari to take us through what has been achieved during the year of uh, reimagining and what lies ahead during the year of revival a very good morning to you doctor and thank you so much for taking time out and uh, joining us on 99 fm no thank you for having me on uh, your show it's uh, indeed a pleasure for yeah. you to be here absolute pleasure uh, i was here a year ago and yeah. uh, i'm back Good to have you back, mm. Doctor. Now, quickly uh, talk to us uh, th uh, about the successes or to go, th go, th go through some of the successes that were achieved thus yes, far. Um, yeah. Over the past eight years of the uh, President Gengo presidency, we have gone through a very challenging period as a nation. We first went through a commodity crisis which affected our fiscal uh, receipts uh, severely and also our ability to roll out some of the very ambitious uh, projects that President Gengop had in terms of infrastructure. But uh, that was also followed by severe droughts, uh, which were recorded to have been the worst in the history of the Republic of Namibia, uh, with government spending uh, large amounts of monies on uh, uh, um, limiting the impacts of those droughts. Over two billion Namibian dollars were spent on droughts, and that's money that could have been spent on uh, uh, boosting education infrastructure, uh, our roads, and also investing in new projects that could uh, provide uh, new employment opportunities for our young people. But that was not the end of it. We went through COVID-19, uh, a global pandemic, which uh, uh, led to severe lockdowns right. and uh, also uh, affecting our tourism sectors, our leisure sectors and cultural sectors, which were not able to uh, to uh, undertake any economic, economic activity during that period. But the president is uh, an eternal optimist. Um, came up with a post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan, which we launched uh, in uh, uh, sometime in 2020. And uh, currently, um, things look much better. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, uh, green hydrogen uh, taking shape. Uh, as we speak, a number of scholarships have been offered to about 90 Namibian uh, students and researchers in order to uh, develop uh, this very important ecosystem, which is a game changer for our country. But we're also fortunate that we are a country that is blessed with natural resources. So mining activity is picking up. Uh, the economy is likely to grow uh, in a slightly better territory this year, uh, when you look at the uh, budget that was tabled, uh, the projections by the IMF uh, at around 3.2 percent. And um, so we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, as the president says, and it's not the oncoming train. So in this year of revival, the president is uh, urging Namibians to come together and uh, to hold hands and to be united, uh, striving for the development of the country. Yes, there are challenges, they are there, but uh, the government is uh, working uh, uh, hard to ensure that we meet uh, those challenges, the investments that we are making in the education sector. Yes, there are challenges in terms of the infrastructure, but these are things that the president directed very early in the year that uh, ministers responsible for that cluster as well as finance cluster, they need to allocate sufficient resources to improve on our school's infrastructure. Doctor, talking a bit about, uh, sorry, Doctor, talk, talking a bit about that, uh, just more specifically, what would you say is planned uh, to revive Namibia in the different socioeconomic sectors, as you uh, uh, briefly alluded to? Yes, uh, as I've spoken, uh, the budget is a critical component in terms of uh, 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 um, sort of kick-starting economic activity. So uh, you can see from our budget, the development budget, has uh, gotten additional resources uh, in order to ensure that we roll out some of the infrastructures that create jobs for young people. 
um, the green schemes are being revived. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture is working hard to ensure that uh, uh, we revive those green schemes in a manner that is sustainable, but in a manner that also leads to our own food security. So that's uh, uh, an important aspect of uh, that revival. But also we are trying to, um, uh, to um, start, to restart a national airline. Because as you know, Namibia was uh, a top tourist des destination and until COVID-19 hit us. We were doing about 1.8 million visitors per annum and I think 2019 was uh, one of the best years for our tourism sector. So this year by restarting, by commencing the process to restart a national airline, we are trying to ensure that we don't depend on others for traffic into Namibia, but we are the ones who are, are, are bringing the tourists into the country, but also creating jobs through uh, that airline and also all other related economic activities that come from uh, a vibrant and robust tourism sector. 100%. Um, doctor, you, we, we understand that the president has ordered cabinet to prioritize projects and to report back on a 100% implementation rate. Now, in terms of realizing these set out objectives for Vision 2030, NDP 5, Harambe Prosperity Plan 2, is this feasible? Is it, are these realistic expectations? And also uh, talking to us a bit about that. Yes, the president uh, um, in his address to cabinet uh, uh, this year did emphasize um, implementation of projects because at times it's not that we don't have uh, the money, mm. but it's because uh, we are slow when it comes to implementation of projects. So in that sense, the president is strengthening the uh, monitoring and evaluation capacities of government to ensure that projects are implemented on time and Namibians benefit from that type of implementation because uh, when projects are not implemented on time, they become costly and also service delivery suffers. So it's the emphasis of the president to push harder in this final sprint uh, in his last two years. He's working with the same determination to ensure that uh, we leave a better Namibian behind than the one we found. Right. Um, in the last year and some change, um, a lot of good news has been coming out of Namibia and Namibia being put on the spotlight in terms of the green hydrogen projects as well as oil discoveries uh, in the land. Um, take us a bit uh, through some of the benefits that are expected um, to have on the Namibian people as well as the economy at large. Yes, uh, the, the, the oil discoveries are, are critical for mm. uh, our medium medium uh, uh, term sort of objectives because uh, uh, the world is going green so the focus is a lot on green industrialization right. but we have the natural resources here and we are going to optimize on uh, our oil discoveries in terms of jobs but also in terms of uh, uh, revenue for government because uh, that's where uh, the, the, the some of the critical aspects lie because uh, that revenue is going to be used to develop our roads, to develop our schools, to develop our hospitals. So that's what we get from uh, uh, those uh, oil discoveries, which are going to come online. Uh, the projections are from 2027. But green hydrogen is already there. Even if uh, when companies are drilling for oil, it's jobs that are created. It's a uh, revenue for government. So we are already benefiting from uh, these um, uh, uh, these projects that are uh, that are already being uh, explored with green hydrogen as we speak the Namibian government is currently uh, in the process of uh, uh, negotiating and finalizing the agreement with the preferred bidder for developing uh, the assets in the south southern part of the country so that will come online sometime later this year but it's also important to emphasize there are other private sector players who are present in that space of green hydrogen and uh, green industrialization. Um, a Belgian and Namibian company is, uh, is going to start the rollout of about uh, a number of uh, green hydrogen stations in uh, the Erongo region, and uh, that's to the tune of 300 million. So jobs are being created as we speak. There's also another player from uh, Hydrogen de France. Uh, they are also active in that space. So the Erongo region is likely to benefit immensely from uh, uh, from from uh, jobs that will be created but right. as a, a as a country we do g we will get revenue that will then be used to develop uh, other sectors of our economy and our social sectors but i think before we we part it's important to emphasize that notwithstanding these difficulties that we've been ex experiencing 
we've been able to strengthen our social protection system. Uh, at the, the budget that was tabled last year, we, uh, last, last week actually, uh, the Minister of Finance uh, with uh, the, 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 the directive from the President increased the, um, the old age pension by 100. Of course, uh, it, it could have been more. But uh, when you look at uh, where we are coming from, in 2016, the old age pension was standing at $600 million. Today, it's 1400 Last year, October, the disability grant for those uh, below the age of 18 was at, at around 250 right. It's over 1400 today. So it tells you that this is a government that cares about the vulnerable. The president always prioritizes th those types of sectors, and it's why uh, the budget that is dedicated to uh, um, protecting the most vulnerable has also been increased as a result. Very notable achievements there. Uh, before we let you go, we are celebrating our 33rd independence anniversary in a few weeks. I'm very, very excited. Um, what is planned w for this particular day? Where will the celebrations take place? Are there any details that the nation can uh, can get? Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an important uh, birthday, uh, um, 33 years uh, of after independence. We are maturing as a democracy. Uh, and... Um, the, the details in as far as uh, where the event will take place uh, will be revealed in due course. But uh, uh, as a country that believes in its own diversity, you know that uh, it rotates uh, around the country. So um, that's, uh, that's where we are. But I think uh, the, the big one is also the State of the Nation address that President Gengop will, uh, will deliver on the 16th of March. So a number of new things will also be revealed in uh, that very important statement. Dr. Angari, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the, the information that you've shared with us and just giving us an update and the ideas to what the, uh, the year of revival looks like and what it means from the presidency, but most importantly, being very optimistic uh, for Namibia's prospects moving forward. And I like the sentence that uh, there's, a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Thank you very much, Dr. Angari, and have a, a great day. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Uh, that was uh, the uh, press secretary at the office of the president, Dr. Alfredo Hengari.